Sue, so, um, how did you and when did you start Samson Productions, your production company? We started in 1976. I had done production for a Walt Disney film called Ride a Wild Pony. I took over on that, um, which was a feature film that they shot here. It was financed with the English Walt Disney. And as a result of that, I got to know them and they kind of liked me. And they asked me if I would do, provide production services for their next film, which was ultimately called Born to Run, which was a telly, telly movie, movie, movie of the week. Uh, and so Tom, Jeffrey, my then husband, had, had a company called Samson Productions, which he'd set up in uh, the late 60s with a colleague from the ABC called Sam Leon, who's no longer in the business, uh, and Samson was just sort of sitting there. So we activated Samson Productions in 1976 for Harness Fever. Was and, Born and to Run. It had two, it had two titles. <laughs> and, did, and did the company sort of, was it just for that? And did you see beyond that? Was there a, Oh, know? yeah, we saw beyond it because we, Tom and I had met at the ABC. He was a director uh, and we, he was very keen to make feature films uh, and... We eventually both left the ABC with a view to producing and directing feature films, Australian feature films. So we certainly saw, and we had, I think, already by then had a couple of goes without success at getting something made. And so we certainly saw Samson as the future. Did you finance it in a sort of business way? Did you raise money for working capital? Good God, no. <laughs> no, no, we just um, rolled along, really. But I guess... Uh, fees and uh, expenses from Harness Fever, Born to Run, gave us some working capital. It gave us enough to get the company up, it gave us a production office and so on. But after that we worked, I think after that we still worked from home for quite a while. Had an office at the house. And, and to, at, in those days uh, the planning uh, was as much wishful thinking as reality. How, much, how did you actually then sustain the business? over the next few years? 1976, uh, then um, we kind of did different things. While we were working on, on trying to make films, I worked as a production manager. Uh, I did uh, The Picture Show Man. Uh, and we'd, we by then had um, uh, a project called Weekend of Shadows. It was adapted from a novel called The Reckoning by Hugh Atkinson. We made that in uh, 77, so we managed to get a film finance quite, uh, quite soon after that, and I guess it was Harness Fever that kind of gave us the momentum in the company uh, to actually find ourselves a lawyer, an accountant, and start to raise some money uh, and get some help to do that. Um, but we did, we, we did finance things through just from our own resources. We, you know, we, never, we never had a business plan, and I never have. Still don't. <laughs> and you didn't borrow heavily? No, we never... No. No. No, I, no. Did you have a, an idea of the sort of things that you wanted to do and why you wanted to do them? Yeah, we did. We wanted to make, we wanted to make feature films, and we wanted to make Australian feature films, and we wanted to make Australian feature films which said something about Australia and about our society. Like quite an altruistic view of what we wanted to do. What about financial ambitions? I don't think we ever thought about it, really. Um, you know, we, all we really ever thought of, we always seemed to have enough money to kind of survive. And I don't think either of us ever thought about being rich or about being fi hugely financially successful. That was not the object of the exercise. The object of the exercise was to have a good life, but to also do something creative that was fulfilling and that uh, that contributed, I think, to Australian culture, if that doesn't sound too pompous. And did that mindset continue or did it change? And if so, when and why? No, I don't think it's ever really changed. Uh, over the years, from time to time, I've done better financially <laughs> than we did then, and that's been good. But no, I don't think it ever has. And um, even today, if I were to make a feature film, I'm only interested in making something which has something to say about our society. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it can't also be part of a good business plan. Not at all. And it also doesn't mean that I never did something that really didn't have much merit at all, because over the years, you'll, there are a lot of things that are not on my CV. 
which kept the show on the road. You don't have to reveal them all, but give us an idea. This is, this is, for example, when you don't have a project, you've got to find a way of making a living, so you were doing other things that fitted your particular aptitudes. So what, what are some of those aptitudes before you were producing? What were the things that you'd trained in? Well, I guess I started as a continuity girl. Um, uh, I learned that uh, through the ABC, and I worked on the first Skippy series and at, at, at Fauna Productions, and I guess it was really there that I learned... Uh, with uh, Joy Cavill and Jill uh, Dempster, Jill Robb, that I learnt production skills and I learnt the kind of basics of production, of filmmaking, that really stood me in very good stead. Then I went to the ABC. The ABC, it was a very good time to be at the ABC. They were doing television series. And the, uh, the, the, the ethos of the ABC drama department uh, was a good one in terms of how it operated. That's not to say the management or that it was incredibly bureaucratic and there were enormous problems, but as a filmmaker, you learnt, you learnt a lot of good things. And so I kind of discovered that my talents, that I had, a, had an ability to organise, had organising and, and um, uh, talents. And so I, when, I, when I left the ABC, I was still freelancing as a continuity girl, but I started to work in production because eventually I got sick of sitting on the set seeing things go wrong around me and thinking I can do better than that you know that's how a lot of people do, get into doing <laughs> things I think if even if it's painting you know, writing I could write a better book than that in my case it was I could run a movie better than these people and as it turned out I could once I got the opportunity you certainly have the track record mm. but tell me I mean when you were a little girl playing with whatever you oh, played okay, with, did, yeah. did, did you say, I want to be a continuity girl? <laughs> no, I had absolutely no idea at all. I mean, I'm just, I'm a, a, a slightly of a generation that really ha had no um, belief that you could ever actually do anything like this in Australia, for making films. I grew up in the bush. Um, uh, I had a kind of middle class background and education. I had a bad education, as it turned out, for a long, not a, not quite a long, boring um, reasons, uh, I just went to some bad schools and I had no ambitions whatever. I mean, I just left school and I intended to have fun. I went over, but I went overseas when I was 21 or 22 and that really changed things for me because I guess apart from the fact of seeing your own country from a different um, perspective, I also got introduced to culture and I discovered that there were music and, uh, and films and all sorts of wonderful things. And when I came back, I um, wanted to do a bit more than just sitting out. I still didn't really think that I could actually work in the film industry. I mean, there are some people who do. Bruce Beresford, for instance, I think wanted to make films from the day he was born. But, uh, but <laughs> I didn't. Uh, and it was a kind of gradual thing. But you, you recognised certain aptitudes that you had, as you say. And that, but, but, but you put them together because film and television were somehow appealing? Yes, uh, it, it kind of came about because writing was really more appealing in the original. Um, uh, w when I came back from England, I started writing freelance articles and, and sending them to newspapers who, up to my amazement, bought them and published them. So I was making a little life for myself as a kind of unskilled free uh, freelance journalist. And eventually, a one day a friend of mine said to me, um, why don't you get a job at the ABC as a script writer? The, the, the thought had never occurred to me, and I thought, well, that's a good idea. And that's how it began. I went to the ABC, said I thought I'd join and become a scriptwriter, and uh, the um, uh, personnel lady said, no, 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 dear, we don't employ scriptwriters off the street, but we do have a typing job available. So I said, that'll do, I can type. So I took that. It's writing. <laughs> yeah, it's writing, it's typing, yeah. And I got into the ABC, and very quickly I found that somehow I'd stumbled into the most wonderful and magical world where... I felt I belonged. Mm. So it was, you know, and I think, just to digress, the film industry is a wonderful place for square pegs. You know, so many people have kind of stumbled across the industry and found that they have uh, an aptitude and it is an outlet for a creativity in them that they never quite understood and they just blossom.